is, is the password still yeah. follows yet? What? The password still follows yet? For, um, oh, go, go to 5G. Oh, 5G. Yeah. And put in uh, capital L live stream. Hey, good looking. I mean, not you, Kelly. I mean, I mean, Kim, you're good looking, but I'm talking to your husband. Just, just sit, sit next to her and put your arm around her. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> yeah, just live stream. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's easy for Greg. Look at that, and he likes it too. <laughs> oh, I love it. She, I just love seeing y'all happy. That's my blessing, and your RV. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, man. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm bringing it up for some reason. Well, I said, well, how many times can you do? Yeah, you'll sleep nine people in that thing. Really? 35 feet. That's awesome. Oh, there he is. There he is. Stud muffin. Takes your two. Oh. So how's everyone doing on their food, okay? No issues with food? All right, good, good, good. I'm trying to put, because um, you know, I'm thinking, hey Jake, we have a good amount of people who've never fasted before, I found out, this past week, and so they don't know what to eat, what not to eat, and um, so, education is always free, hopefully. I was talking to someone about, they asked me if, if they could eat fish, and I said, well, yeah, because when I went to Jerusalem, they had Shabbat, and uh, I'm, I'm walking around there looking at stuff, and saw all these salads and everything, and they had fish over there. And I asked my guy, who's a Levite from the tribe of Levi, and he says, yeah, Jews don't consider fish to be meat. I was like, oh, Lord, hold on, they hate it. I was like, pray in tongues in Jerusalem. So, <laughs> I, so I've been eating fish ever since on Thai, so it's, I mean, on, on uh, Thai, it's on Basket, and so it's it's a uh, it's great, it's great. Yeah, you're right too. So awesome. So tomorrow night, remember, we're going to receive offering, offering. We're going to receive communion. So you uh, family members who are online, make sure that you grab your uh, your communion, your grape juice, your crackers, your matzo bread, your whatever you want to bring. We're going to receive communion tomorrow, and. Um, but tonight I'm going to teach for a little bit, and then we're going to, I'm sure we'll have some prophetic word from all these great women men of God here, and then we're going to pray for a bit, or, or we'll pray after that, or we'll pray before that. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. Ooh, hey. Are you new here, man? <laughs> it's my wife. If you're online, don't. And uh, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Another night of fasting and praying, reading your word and worshiping. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as we perform these joyous festivals, these duties, Lord, that we love, we are continually showing our self-sacrifice to you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can continually grow in you in this area in our lives, God, and that, that it's a joy to give up what we love, what we need for the one who gave us everything, Father. We thank you. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, um, just I'm going to touch real quick on just a, just one area. And I was praying tonight and um, I had a really, really busy day. And, and I said, Lord, so what do you want me to share? And I knew it was something. And so I, I was getting nothing, getting nothing, getting nothing. And when I got to the, hey, when I got to the front door, I pulled up. And he says, Jerry, I want you to share on being consistent. And I, and I said, okay, Lord, we'll kind of break it down for me here. And so being consistent in our faith walk, okay? Being consistent in our faith walk. Um, and whenever I use a, a word, uh, you know, an adjective or something like that, or a, a noun, or a consistent, it's a dad. So we got to find out what it means. So first I go to the dictionary, 
and there are a couple of free meetings and one of them just really blew me away. So the word consistent means marked by harmony, regulatory or steady continuity, free from variation or contradiction. That's one definition of consistency. The next one is marked by agreement. Agreement. Um, does your life fall into agreement with God's word on a regular, harmonic, steady basis? The next one is showing steady conformity to character, profession, belief, or custom. So does your Christian walk, when it's good and bad, does it show the character of Christ? Do you treat your Christian walk as a profession? As a profession. Do you hone your skill like that? But here is the one that just blew me away, and this is the most gooderest, awesome definition of consistency I've ever heard in my life. It is tending to be arbitrarily close to the true value of the parameter established as the sample becomes large. And I'm like, what does that mean? So I began to pray about it, you know, and everything. It's like, okay, tending to be arbitrarily close, so looking like, acting like, to the true value of the parameter, meaning the standard, estimated as the sample becomes larger. Do you remember back in the 80s? Let's see, it's not you, Jake, uh, and not you, Siobhan. Okay, remember back in the 80s when Wendy's was really good? Where's the beef? Oh, yeah. yeah, remember that? <laughs> when, I mean, you know, I mean, they had big fat, big fat piece of meat. Yeah. Do you remember back in the 80s when Kentucky Fried Chicken was really, really good? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay? Yeah. Their recipe has not been consistent as the sample becomes larger. Remember how Coke, Coca Cola used to take, taste back in the 70s and 80s? You go to Mexico, it tastes like it did back in the 70s and 80s. Because over here, we started using corn syrup. Yeah. And over there, they use sugar. <laughs> Church. And so, consistency for Christians is, the further away we get from when Jesus died and rose again, or from our, our, our BC time, that shows our consistency. The further we get away from what Christ is and does, from, from his death, burial, resurrection, can you still look like Jesus down the road? Let's think about our kids. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not getting something. Why would we need to move away from Jesus? Well, we have to move away in the sense of chronological, not sample-wise, not not authenticity. That's a good question. It's a great question. Okay, so as we, as since he was born 2,000 years ago and we were born now or within the last 100 years, we've never seen him in person. We've never touched him. But can we still live like him in consistency? And where we are today as Christians is this. For the most part, we're not. We're not. And do you know how I can tell that? By the world. If sinners changed, if sinners, how do I put this and not be condemning? Okay. <laughs> if sinners revered pastors today the way they did in the 50s and 60s, I would know for a fact that people still have a reverential fear of God. But today, heck, 13 years ago when we moved here, and I was passing out cards, hey, you know, we have a new church, da 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 This lady looked at me and said, I don't give a F where you, who you are. <laughs> looked at me, and I said, I'm Pastor Jerry, we're starting a new church. And, they, and her said, I don't give an F who you are. I don't F and want to go to church. So that proves to me, you now I'm not going to blame it on the church, but it proves to me that something was cracked in her consistency soul. Because she's had a negative experience with church or Christians. 
So let's begin to walk through this process because we want to be consistent. I don't want to drink Coca-Cola that tastes like syrup. I don't want to taste Kentucky Fried Chicken that tastes like yuck. I want to taste the real thing. Ooh, that's good. I like to, no, no, okay, never mind. All right, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And we're gonna walk through this process here just for a few minutes before we pray. Because if we can get this during our fast, if we can say, Lord, I wanna be consistent, then we can really begin to alter the, our sphere of influence. So this the Empire Bible says, therefore my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, so don't move, be immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord. Ooh. Always doing your best and doing more than is needed. More than enough. Being continually aware that your labor, even to the point of exhaustion, is it is it, when was the last time you went to church so much, you prayed so much, you sowed so much, you you you, you helped the homeless was that you were worn completely out. I can't remember what happened. Well, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Exhaustion. In the Lord is not futile or wasted. It is never without purpose. In other words, he sees your exhaustion. He sees why and what you're doing. So, hey, don't worry about it. You're being consistent. You're being consistent. Galatians 6, 2. Turn there real quick. Galatians 6, 2. This is kind of a long chapter, but it's worth the, and the, uh, the read. Galatians 6, 2. Let's be exhausted, oh Lord. Let's wear ourselves through that. Wouldn't it be awesome if one day God says, Jerry, or Debbie, or Greg, hey, you know what? You've done enough. It's just going to rest. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, yes. now. Galatians 6 2. Amplified. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. This whole thing is amplified. Thank you, brother. Yes. Carry one another's burdens consistently. Now, that doesn't mean listen to what they say and go, oh, I'll pray for you. The literal meaning of carry means to, if Pat came to me or Tim or Joe or, or, or Greg or, 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 or anybody said, hey, I'm going through a rough time with my kids. I'm going through a rough time with my finances. Can you help me? Can you pray with me? And what that means is that you now take literally half of their burden and put it in your backpack. That's the literal meaning of that. And so now you feel as weighted as they do. Now, here's the key. Only take on what God tells you to take on. That's called wasted grace if you don't, if you do it the wrong way. Wasted grace. So, but God has put people in our lives all around that he's wanted us to carry their burdens consistently. And in this way, you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. For if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior consistently. And then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. For every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. The one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with this teacher, contributing to his spiritual and, mater and material support consistently. Don't be deceived, God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he's going to reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his wilderness, his disgraceful impulses, will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Now here's the key for us. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap if we don't give in. See, Jerry Campers has to learn to keep sowing when it doesn't look like it's working. 
Jerry Campers has to learn that even though you say, I'm going to do this for the Lord, and they kick you in the face, you got to say, you know, oh, that hurt? Well, I'm going to do it for the Lord, and it hurts. Jerry Campers has to learn that even though I don't feel like it some days, I've got to keep loving, I've got to keep praying, I've got to keep prophesying, I, I, I have to continually be consistent on a regular basis, and at the and at at God's time, at God's time, He'll repay me like He was doing it all. So I'll say this, say this because today I got one of the biggest blessings in my life. I prayed for this for four years. I told my wife today, and I said I had a conversation with someone. And it was the best conversation I've had with this person in four years. And it's what I've been praying for. Amen. And, I, and I didn't even know if it could happen. You know, I said, let's see, you part the Red Sea, you made the ax float. Okay, it could happen. But I, I, I had to be consistent, and I wasn't always good sometimes. Thank God for grace. But I had to be consistent in my confessions and how I treated them when they were around me. And even when they weren't around me. Hallelujah. I'm, 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 talking, I'm talking about me, by the way, y'all. Be consistent. So then, verse 10, so then while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people. Not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being. I dare you this week, next week, when someone says they're having a blankety blank blank day you say hey um can we pray about it real quick do, do you mind if we just pray real fast I, I, I know you've done it many times you told me that can we just pray about that real fast they have just cussed up a storm they've used the words that you've never heard before which means they're hurting on the inside by the way and you go man you know i'm sorry that your daughter did that i'm sorry that the boss did that i'm sorry that you you know you're feeling bad but Hey, do you mind if we just just go over here in the corner and just pray? Real, just just take ten seconds. We'll pray. I I I I would bet a chair that they would say, yeah, and 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 they may cuss when they say yeah, but that's the first step. Because I got a buddy of mine right now. I've known him for seven years, seven years, and he has the the filthiest mouth I've ever heard of him in my life. And he, he has a ton of money. His wife hates him. He, he just had an affair with his wife, and now she's mad at him. And he, a few weeks ago, he says, Jerry, can you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus. Woo! He hates pastors. He hates church. He talks about Joel. He talks about everybody. Just take, they're, they're all pieces of blank blanket blank. And he says, Jerry, can you pray with me? I'm, I'm having a bad day. And see, it's not me, though. You understand? understand, it's not me. Okay? Holy Spirit. And I believe, this is just me, and, and I said this a few weeks ago, I believe that for this revival to happen that we're believing God for, it won't happen the way we think it will happen. That's right. It's going to happen with Shauna working in the world and sharing the gospel with these young ladies. It's going to work when Dave goes and sells the house. It's going to work when Joe's talking to some 25 or 50-year-old kid who's cussing up a storm and talking to us. It's going to help it. Greg goes and talks to these rank, rank truckers and say, hey, you know what? I'm a man of God and God saved my marriage. God saved my kids. That's where it's going to work. Grassroots Christianity. Consistency. 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 Being consistent. Luke 16, 13 says this. And it's also, also the Amplified Bible, Luke 16, 13. It says, no servant, which we are, can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand devoted by the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is a spirit, not a person. Mammon is simply greed. And sometimes we get caught up in the avarice of the world, wanting certain things from the world, and losing our spiritual consistency. Because we want to be liked, we want to be asked to certain places, we want to uh, be thought of in a, in a certain way with certain people, certain groups of people, 
and then we compromise our consistency. We even may even want people in our family to like us. <laughs> and then we compromise certain things. Compromise does not rhyme with consistency. Titus 2.6. Titus 2.6. Hallelujah. It says, in a similar, this is Bible also, in, in a similar way, urge the young men to be sensible and self-controlled and to behave wisely, taking life seriously. And in all things, show yourself to be an example of good works with purity and doctrine. It means your doctrine has something of value having the strictest regard for integrity and truth and being dignified, sound and beyond reproach in instruction so that the opponent of the faith, so someone is questioning your walk, you're not a Christian, well, prove it, will be shamed having nothing bad to say about us. Skip down to verse 11. For the remarkable, undeserved grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to reject ungodliness and worldly and moral desires and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives. Lives with a purpose that reflect spiritual maturity in this present age. They were talking about being mature 2,000 years ago when there were no, there was no Instagram and, and nothing. It was just Walkergram and Robogram and, and Sandalogram. I mean, they had nothing back then. But Christians weren't being consistent. One of my mentors says, I in, so in space, consistency lies the power. Within consistency or inconsistency, not, not being inconsistent, but in or because you're consistent, you will have power. You will have power. Because there's so much power in being dependable. Yes. Whether you are a saint or a sinner, at least at least I know where you're coming from. Col Colossians 2 6. Colossians 2 6. It's our last few verses here. I'm going to close out here. Hallelujah. Amplified Bible says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in union with him, reflecting his character, be consistent in the things you do and say, living lives that lead others away from sin. Isn't that powerful? Joe's life can lead someone from sin. Shauna's life can lead. When they look at y'all, they go, man, I don't know who they are, but I want to go where they are going. I don't know, I mean, they're, they just don't act like everybody else's, but there's something awesome, so I want to just go, our lifestyle of being consistent can lead people from sin. They may cuss us out beforehand, or, or even around, or the whole time. Who the F do you think you are? Who the heck do you think you are? You think you're better than me? No. I'm actually probably worse than you are. That's why I need more grace than you. And y'all, it is a lovely thing to be cursed out for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's why? Because you know that you do something right. So then it says here, having been deeply rooted in him and now being continually, ooh, ooh, wow, continually built up in him and becoming increasingly more, what says, established in your faith, just as you were taught and overflowing in it with gratitude. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception pseudo and intellectual babble according to the tradition and musings of mere men following the exact like elementary principles of this world rather than following the truth the teachings of Christ watch this now this is just me I'm a down home country boy I mean I like gravy I like chicken fried steak I like fried catfish I like you know just simple food but when you try to put a fusion on food, when you want to mix stuff in, and let's try 
I think someone had bell peppers with greens. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, no, 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 you don't do that. There are certain things you don't do. Did, did someone have sweet potatoes with macaroni and cheese mixed in? Yeah, stop, stop, stop. Just let it, just leave stuff alone. And the same thing as Christianity. Y'all, and I think I heard this from that. Being a Christian is not hard. Just obey. Just die and obey. It's not, it's not that hard. We, at the core, we are evil. We need a savior who can transfer and, and exchange his goodness for our nastiness. He died for us. Now we live for him because he died for us. And now we walk through this life as an example, as an ambassador of the one who died for us. That's, I mean, how, how much more black and white can you get? But when you mix in this fusion stuff, this all this these acts, it really pulls you away from relationship. 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 Verse 10 says, and in him you have made, yeah, let's skip down, I'm sorry. Yes, in him you have made, you have been made complete, achieving spiritual stature through Christ. And he is the head over all rule and authority of every angelic earthly power. So from Pat, to Shawnee, to Miss Jerry, to my wife, to Siobhan, to everybody in this room, understand this as I get up and get ready to pray. I don't care how jacked up you feel, how jacked up you have acted today, this past week, this past month, I don't care you, about your frailties or your insecurities or your family drama. This says you are complete. You're complete. You're complete in him. You're complete in Jesus. And you can't get no better than that. You're complete in him. Meaning that just like you said last night, you don't have to come to daddy acting holy. Just come, hang out with him, mess up his room. He's going to love you. He's going to love you. He's going to love you. He's, he's waiting here to say, you know what? Yes, you have me consistent, but my son died for you, and he died for your inconsistency. So now, let's forget about it and just come hang out with daddy. Come say, come, just come repent, and let's just hang out. And that's the key of Christianity, y'all. It's not doing, it's being. It's B. My wife will love me if I do nothing else. Because why? We have established over 20 years a relationship. Now, if I break the code, there's something different. But you don't, I don't have to work at her loving me. It's, it's kind of like automatic. You don't have to work at Jesus loving you. It's automatic. He loved you before you were born. Before your great... I talked to Dave about... Um, he has some writing of his family being... Uh, say back in the 1800s, something like that. And I'm like, wow, back then, he was thinking about David Hinkle. You think, I mean, if you think about it, when his, with the great grandparents? The great grandparents. The family Bible. The family Bible back in 18 what? 1847. 1847. He was thinking about Dave then. So you're complete in him, church. You're complete in him. You have to do nothing but just love Jesus. So forget about the doing, the doing, the doing. Just be. It's powerful. It's powerful. And I, I, I keep referring to Pat because when we talk a lot in the mornings and he says, I'm, I'm hanging out with my best friend. <laughs> How much more play can you get? I mean, I've got two or three best friends in this world. And when I'm with them, I, I do nothing. I just hang out and we laugh and crack jokes. That's Jesus. So during this fast, think about am I consistent? And then if you aren't, why aren't you? What are you trying to do to make yourself gooder? Versus if you are consistent, how can you become more consistent? Not by doing, but just by entering rest.
rest. And I'm going to preach on that this year. I have a sermon that we have got to enter our rest. When you've done enough, when you've done what you're called to do, you need to sit back and rest. Not stop, but rest. Do you got anything at all before you go pray? Hallelujah. Well, during this time of prayer, gang, I, you know, just begin to ask the Lord, you know, am I consistent? Am I consistent? Am I consistent? Am I consistent? Um, Joe and Shauna, I was hoping y'all would be here tonight. Um, the Lord was talking to me tonight, and he says, Jerry, tell Joe and Shauna that, um, what they had been praying for, for their girls. I don't like to put dates on it, but there's gonna be a marked change, um, a marked change in your three daughters this year. And I don't know what you've been praying for, that it doesn't matter. But, but I know that you both have been praying something, praying, praying that something will change, something will break, something will happen, something will click in, uh, in your girls. And, it's, uh, and I don't even think it's a sin issue. But I just think, as as two parents who love their girls, I just see something breaking this year, something breaking off of them. There you go, something breaking off, something coming off, something something is being uh, uh, what did Shauna say on Sunday? It's a new what? No, she said something. It's a new. Something, it's, it's new, but it, it, uh, it's gonna seem like, wow, I've, I've, I've missed that in my daughter. I, I've missed that in you. Yeah, that's what it is. It's gonna seem like, ooh, that's refreshing. That's what we've been praying for. So, and here's the key. I want you to believe it, and, I, and then, I want, then I want you to look for it. So Lord, you said it, and we prayed for it, and it's gonna happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives, Father. We thank you, Father God, that we are going to be consistent with you, Father. That we'll be consistent in every area of our, of our lives, Father. And that we'll be drawn to you more and more and more, Father. We are consistent in blessing. We're consistent in, in, in peace and love and joy, Father. We are consistent in just everything that is of you, Father. We just thank you, Lord. That we walk by faith and not by sight, Father. We thank you for the God that as we grow into more mature children, your kids who are hungry for your word and your blessing, that you will meet us where we are. You will meet us where we are, Father. Go round that Sunday, you keep the road to Soto Oko. Rondo Soto Oko and that you keep. Rondo Sini, you keep the road to Soto Oko. Rondi did he sing the Ikiro Soto Oko. Ronda Sanda, you keep Rondo Soto Oko. Ronda Sanda, you keep Rondo Soto Oko. Rondi did he sing the Ikiro Soto Oko. Rondi Sini, you keep Rondo Soto Ikiro Sanda. Ronda Sanda Iki. Rondo Sono Okorebasa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Rondo Sidi Iki, Rondo Sodo Oko. Ronda Sanda Iki, Rondo Sodo Oko. Rondi Sidi Iki, Rondo Sono Oko. Consistency, consistency in Christianity. And every person in this house, every person watching online, every person who is a part of the Power Life Church, every person who received this and share, we are going to be consistent in Jesus. 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 Consistent in our relationship. Relationship. Relationship with Jesus. We're walking in a relationship with Jesus. We're living in a relationship with Jesus. Thus saith the Lord, my children, do not stop praying. Do not stop believing for the things that are impossible for you to believe for are 
every day matters for me. Don't stop praying, my children. Don't stop praying for the things that you, that scare you. The things that you say, man, this can't be done. This is so hard for me. Yes, it is hard for you, but it's, it's, it's not impossible for God. Don't stop believing. Don't stop praying. Don't stop confessing. Don't stop in my word. Continue in my word. Continue in your faith. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Thank you, Jesus. Rondo solo oko, lara sanda iki, rondo si iki, rondi ni si ni iki, rondo sondo oko, randa sanda iki. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rondi si ni iki, rondo sondo oko, rondi si ni iki, rondo sondo oko, rondi si ni iki, rondo sondo oko. Thank you, Father God. Miss Sherry, the Lord hears your prayer for your son. The Lord hears your prayer for him. He's not lost. He's not forgotten. God hadn't forgotten about your son. He's been in a wilderness for years, thus saith the Lord. And it's not your fault. It's not his father's fault. It's the choices that he's made, thus saith the Lord. And, and God is walking him through this time of his life, this process. And, and he's not going to fail you or him. But he's saying, don't stop praying. Don't give up. Don't, don't let any lies. Don't, let, don't even tell people who don't have faith for it. There are a few things more powerful than a mother's prayers over their children. A few things. Just a few. But don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Whenever things happen that, is, that are not your prayer, you come against them in the spirit realm and you confess the word over it. When you talk to him, when, when you're around him, you confess the word over him. Even if he gets upset, you confess it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Greg, are you thinking about buying another truck? Okay, well, write it down and let your wife look at it. <laughs> but yeah, just write it down. The Bible says write the vision down. So just write it down. Uh, I, I ain't saying yeah or nay, but just write it down. Just just let it process. Just let it marinate. Just write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Rondo so cold and I sang that he came. Rondi sili he came. Rondo and I sang that he came. Rondo sili he came. Jake, this is going to be your busiest summer ever, Jake. You're going to be worn completely out. Your whole body is going to be red from just being out in the sun so much. So God is saying that he wants you to begin to think about training up people under you, training up people who can do what you do, and so you can get your rest. He wants you to continually sow in the kingdom, sow your proceeds in the kingdom, but God is getting ready to, to, to just to open up doors so big, not only financially but spiritually for you. Uh, and so, don't don't be afraid to step out on some ventures. Uh, pray about it. Ask um, ask people who've been there and done that. But but you're going to enter a summer where it's just going to be crazy, a good crazy, a good crazy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ronde la la sanda iki. Ronda sanda iki, rodo sanda iki. Ronde heke de la santo ronda iki de los santo oko. Ronda sanda iki de los santo iki. Ronda iki. Joe, I know you've begun to think about retirement, but I want you to kind of begin to sit down and write out a plan for that. Because as you know that everything that you've got financially and physically is not from you, it's from the Lord. And I know you know that. But don't ever be afraid of planning because I'm planning things right now that that I don't necessarily like to plan but I know the end is coming on some things and so just like you don't want to ever plan for their funeral you know, eventually you're going to die but begin to sit down and plan out what you want to do when you're done 
work on elevators. Think about what you want to do for the Lord because you're going to be very, very busy. And so just begin to process that, talk to your sweetheart about that. And, and I'm not saying it's going to happen this year or next year or three years, but but the season is changing for, for back-breaking work. You have a great mind of oversight and vision, and God's going to begin to use that. Our online family, I speak to the young boy who has COVID that I heard about today or yesterday, and he's healed by your stripes, Lord Jesus. He's healed by your stripes. All COVID is healed, Father God. Oh, Lord Jesus. And Lord, those who have gone to heaven, give the ones who are left behind peace, Father. Give them a peace that they can't even comprehend, Lord. Give them a peace, Lord, that they go, why do I feel so ungrief stricken? Why do I feel like they've just passed from one dimension to another? Why am I not drowning in tears? It's because of God's peace. His peace. And Lord, we just, every Christian who's in heaven, give their families peace, God. It's so horrible to lose someone you love before we want to let them go. But Father God, you said, your son said that you give us peace, not like the world gives. So give them that peace, Lord. Rosie's family, peace, Lord Jesus. We lift up Pastor Richard, Rosie's, Miss Rosie's husband. Oh, Father God, her children, her friends, Father. That you give them peace, Father. Peace, 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 Lord. Peace that transcends all understanding. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Miss Debbie, when those delays come in the building of your home, they're meant to frustrate your husband, not you. Okay? They're meant to frustrate him. And by his frustration, by his outburst, that's going to be your opportunity. And the word I hear is don't hold back. In the spirit, don't, not, don't do the flesh. <laughs> but don't hold back. He's going to give you an, an avenue, a, a window of opportunity. And so you just kind of garrison yourself. Prepare yourself. Be in be be in the moment. And when they say, "Hey, we have a three week delay here, a two week delay here," okay, no problem. And let God fight your battle. Thank you. Worship, 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 worship. Thank you, Jesus. Kim, during this fast, Kim Pilcher, God is going to be really begin to meet you in some areas of your life. He's going to really begin to be intimate with you, Kimberly. Um, you've been wanting that for years and years and years. You've been wanting to really know God on a deeper level. And he's saying, Kim, my daughter, I've been here the whole time. You've just been afraid to. And just just hear me as, as just being... Through this fast together and understand.
understand we have people online. We have people across the country in Virginia and Oklahoma and Colorado who are fasting with us. We are a body fasting together. Fasting together. Fasting together. Thank you, Jesus. Tim, the Lord sees your consistency. He sees your wife's consistency. And there is a reward for being faithful. And your personality is to go, no, 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 no. He says, receive it. And and, and quite frankly, you, you have a hard time saying that. And, and I want you to get that in your vocabulary, Timothy. Lord, I receive it. And you aren't faithful in your own flesh. You're faithful in your humility. You're faithful in your commitment. And you just need to say, Lord, I receive it. Because who are we to tell God what we're going to receive from him? So just begin to say, Lord, I receive it. 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 Oh my gosh. David and Chris, um, I don't know. I know it's not Kevin. But, but one of your sons is very, very intellectual. They're very, very... Um, I want to say Darwinism, but I don't go that far. But God is going to begin to show him things through his intellect, in, through his mind about God's faithfulness, about God, about God's divinity. He's going to begin to bring people in his life that are going to begin to wreck his his uh, paradigm of I got to see it before I believe it. If it's not in my hands, I don't believe it. God's going to begin to really frustrate this young man and then he's going to be there for you he's going to go dad now what did you say about this god thing and that this 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 spiritual this faith thing got dad and that's going to be your window day and i don't know what's going to happen and i don't know which i know it's not kevin but it's it's one of the other two and just um just 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 believe it's going to happen and when it's there, you get a phone call. You may be in the middle of fixing a roof or whatever, but he's going to call you and you'll drop everything. Like I, like I did today, you'll drop everything because it's what you and Chris did praying for. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. You don't have any short prophetic words at all? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God can do great things in three days. Hey, you know, Jesus died and rose from the dead in three days. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Wow, I, I never thought about that. I mean, I was like, God, it's only three days. Uh, my son died and rose three days. Okay. I feel dumb. Wow. Wow. How long was Jonah in the belly of a whale? Wow. Oh, I'm getting chills. And they're multiplying it. <laughs> Jake's like, what? what? And I'm losing control. Wow, three days. Three days. Well, that, that, that's a sermon series. What else did God do in three days? Man. And I guess what I'm saying and feeling, guys, is that there, there, don't put God on a time limit. Don't think your devotion to God isn't enough. Don't compare anything to that because one thing my wife did say is that, you know, we do a 21 day fast and people fluff off for 21 days. But you do a three day fast of intensity, intensity, intensity. 
Amen. Wow. I receive it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Well, Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for a great night of prayer, word, worship, and fasting. We thank you, Father God, that t tomorrow night, as my wife shares, as as Jill shares, as 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 we receive communion, Father, that you were you're still here waiting on us, and you go with us as we leave, Father. Thank you, Lord, that great things are happening, not just for this church, not just for our partners but for people who are in our sphere of influence. They will want to be like us because of you in us, not because of Jerry or Tony or Debbie or Shauna or Shawnee. They see Jesus in us. They see God in the papes. They see God in the Hinkleys. They see God in Siobhan. They, they see something so different and that they want. So thank you, Father, for this wonderful day we've had to pray and fast and all the blessings that are coming and all the intimacy that's here right now, Father. We thank you. We praise your name. Amen, amen. We love you, online family. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. And uh, we love you all in person, family. Amen. <laughs>